word says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. 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 That's what we're here to do tonight. Um, let's let's do that. Let us stand. Let us let us magnify the Lord. Let us bless his holy name today. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Has the Lord been good to anyone here? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord, he is good. The Lord, he is good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for this evening, Lord. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for the time that we have here, Lord, O oh God. Lord, we feel your presence already, Lord, O oh God. There's a, a spirit of peace in this house, Lord, O oh God. There's a spirit of reverence in the house today. There's a spirit of revelation in this house. There's a spirit of learning. Lord, we're going to glean from your word today, Lord, O oh God. It's going to refresh us, Lord, O oh God. It's going to wash us tonight, Lord, O oh God. Lord, the angels are going to move. Lord, they're going to minister to us tonight, Lord, O oh God. Father, you're going to do your will, Lord, O oh God. You're going to do your thing, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're anticipating, Lord, O oh God, your movement, Lord, O oh God, even this night, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here tonight, Lord, O oh God. We ask, Lord, O oh God, that, that this lesson, Lord, O oh God, would be a blessing, Lord, to the church, Lord. Lord, that we would glean from it, Lord, that we would learn and that we'd be challenged, Lord, O oh God. Lord, that there would be no offense, Lord, O oh God. But, Lord, that we will take it, Lord, O oh God. We'll receive it, Lord, learn from it, and go forward, Lord, O oh God, and do your will. Father, once again, we give you honor, we give you praise. Even right now, Lord, O oh God, we are worshiping. Lord, we are praising your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Thanks and honor tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to give honor to my pastor. I want to give honor to his first wife, uh, the first wife of the, uh, or the first lady of the house. Um, she's laughing at me. Oh, Sister Pat's laughing at me. Okay. <laughs> the first, first lady of the house. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you tonight. Uh, wish pastor could have been here. He was saying that he wanted to be here tonight, but um, uh, he's still uh, recovering. So let us keep him also in mind and in prayer um, uh, throughout throughout this evening uh, as we go through the lesson. Want to also give honor to our elder brother Mike and his wife, and want to give honor to the saints. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I brought my search for truth chart. Now, nice. Uh, I'm not. I'm not actually teaching the search for truth uh, Bible study tonight, but I'm just using it as, as a reference. Um, if I was teaching it, I would go a little bit further in depth. But I do have, I do have a a, a mission. I'm on a mission, and I do have a theme um, that that the Lord has given to me. Um, I've got about four hours worth of notes, um, so either buckle up or leave whenever you're ready. No, I'm just kidding. No, I do have an end. Um, I do have it, yep. I may have to um, maybe do like another series or something uh, on, on the rest of it because uh, this thing is jam-packed. The Lord has just kept on. Um, having me write and write and write, and I've got notes, frr, 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 pages of notes here. Um, so um, I've been working on this for the last uh, almost month now uh, through prayer and and um, really seeking God on what, what I would speak on. And uh, I don't think I've ever spoke on any of this or used even this, even this, um, uh, scriptures uh, for any of a, a, a just, a going forth Bible study. So this is going to be interesting. So this is definitely of the Lord. This is what we needed. This is what the word of God is for today. And uh, I believe that it's going to touch us and it's going to bless us and it's going to help us. Amen. It's going to help us. So um, without further ado, because I got only so much time, uh, I'm going to get right on into this. Uh, as we see here, uh, we I started off in the beginning, just the way the Bible does. And this is the beginning, actually, of the search for truth. Uh, Bible story has anyone gone through the whole thing awesome awesome most most david have you ever gone through it no no okay all right yes the search for truth bible no okay all right yeah well um 
mine's not too long, but um, I've taught it for, for many years. I've taught this for many years, and, and um, uh, it's, it's engraved in me, and, and uh, it's something that's dear to my heart. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it till till the end of my time. I feel that it is the best. I feel that if you go from the beginning and go all the way through the end, uh, it does take you through Genesis all the way through Revelations. You're going to know more than pastors out here that are that are holding and, and running churches out here once you go through this Bible study. I mean, it's truly that intense, and, and it really gets into uh, detail of the Word. Amen? Okay, so here we go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. We find that in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, a lot of question on on uh, creation, whether it's creation or evolution. Do I believe in the Big Bang? Yep, I do. I believe there was a Big Bang. I believe that when everything was created and everything, bang, he spoke it into existence. I'm sure it made sound. I'm sure when all the planets and all the stars and the moons, they all come together, the existence of everything and the, the rotation of everything, trees coming out of the ground. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of makes some noise. The water's just going through, you know. Um, had to make some noise, so I believe, I highly believe in the Big Bang. However, I don't believe that everything happened uh, in happen chance. That I don't believe. I don't think that, I don't think that things, things eventually revolve into, into being better. I believe if you leave something alone, you leave a home by itself, it's not going to get any better. Uh, it's just going to get worse. I mean, I, I've seen homes that have been overtaken by, by grass and weeds and just, just you know, natural, natural rain and, and wind and debris and whatever. So things just don't get better in time. They, they depreciate, right? Amen? So I believe in a creator, and so should we. If, if for instance, there is a car, and it's a complete car, then there has to be a maker. Somebody made that. We have a clock in the back. We had to have a clock maker in order to make that. So there was a maker of that. And I believe that there is a creator, someone that is far more intelligent than any one of us that could, that could bring this all together and it to be inhabitable for humans to live in and exist I mean, the intricacy of the eye. I mean, the Bible speaks, uh, the Bible speaks of we, 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 are, we have no excuse. We have no excuse. I mean, just by looking at, at creation, we know, we know the creator. We know that there is someone that had to have created all this. Amen. Amen. The creation of the earth. Uh, first, God said, let, let their light and light appeared. And at the end of that, at the end of that day, he saw that everything was good. The second day, we have waters divide from waters above and waters below. We have rain, we have water below in the oceans, right? God saw that this was all good. And once again, I'm just using it as a reference. I would go in full detail uh, with this if I was teaching the Search for Truth Bible study. The third day, uh, God divided the grass. He divided the the, the earth. Uh, went forth uh, water. And he brought forth uh, grass, trees, everything that, that uh, is vegetation. Amen. And then on the fourth day, he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Everything that God has done, he does in order. Right? We need, we need the sun. We need the sun for the plants. We need the moon. We need the stars for, for uh, light at, at a little bit of light during the nighttime. The plants need all this. The oceans and the seas, they operate off of the moonlight, right? So everything is done in order. Saw that light, saw that, saw that that was good. Uh, going on to the fifth day, we have, we have the creatures in the ocean. We have the fowls of the air. Saw that that was good. On the sixth day, then we have we have uh, we have man. He created man, blew uh, air into and life into man, created man. And on the seventh day, God rested. Now, all this is scripturally; it's in the Bible and it's in full detail. Once again, I'm not using this; I'm just using this as as a reference point and also a visual so that you can follow along. Amen. Okay, now, um, each section of this um, uh, Bible study, there is a dispensation, a time, a time period where God deals with man, amen? 
the first dispensation was innocence. Now, Adam and Eve, God didn't create them as little babies and left them on their own, right? When God created, I believe that he didn't make little trees. He didn't make little plants. He made everything already mature so that when we go ahead and excavate, uh, um, uh, what's the word that I'm thinking? Um, when we dig and we look into the earth, we go through, we excavate through, and we look and we try to, uh, man tries to calculate how old the planet already is. We can't go by any of that because God has already made this world, this planet, everything maturely. Everything was grown maturely. We've got big trees, not little trees. So Adam and Eve, they were, they were grown human beings. However, they were just in, in a state of innocence, just like a child, Right? Now, imagine, imagine if we still lived in innocence. A child is innocent. A child has to depend on its parents, has to depend on, on dad. It has to depend on mom. They provide, they provide shelter. They provide food. They provide clothing. They provide everything that child needs, just like our Heavenly Father takes care of us. And if we would just lean on Him... As, as an innocent child, this, Lord, this, this world would definitely be a better place. Amen? So here we go. I'm going to start right here. So Adam and Eve was created in innocence. They were warned of consequence of sin. Now, evidently, they didn't have a whole lot of law, right? The only law that was given was, 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 uh, was all in all the garden you can eat of everything, but this one tree you can't eat. So in Genesis, we find in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 17, it says, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Good and evil. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die if thou eat of it. Right? Now, again, not much of a law. So, we have to give we have to give them a little bit of grace, you know, for the fall, right? Now, once again, God gave Adam and Eve a mind of innocence. As a child, you have childlike faith, right? We have that childlike faith. Uh, we find in Genesis chapter three, verse one through five, going forward, it says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden... God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Not right there, okay. Um, don't add to the word. She added to the word. God never said, don't touch it. Don't add to the word. We don't need to help God here. Uh, right? Okay, going on. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know it in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes will be open. Right? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, if you look in your King James Version Bible, which that's really the only Bible that I ever look at. I only read the King James Version um, just because there's so many versions out there uh, that have kind of watered down the word. And, and I want to get as close to the original as I possibly can. So myself, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, that that's the only thing that you should do, but that's the only thing that I use. I use the King James Bible. And when I look at the King James Bible, uh, the, the word gods is in lower G-O-D-S, right? 
this is the first time mentioned that there is more than one God. We want to talk about confusion here. Adam and Eve, they only knew God. God came down, visited them in the cool of the cool day of the garden, walked with them, talked with them, taught them, learned, right? Just they, they only dealt with God, the God that they knew, the God creator of the heavens and the earth. That's all they knew. And now we have we have this serpent that is saying that there are that there are gods and that your eyes will be open and you will know you will have this knowledge right so now going down to verse 6 of genesis chapter 2 it says and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and the and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave unto her husband. Evidently, her husband was right next to her. He has no excuse. He was warned. He was, he was, Adam was the one that was told this commandment not to eat. It wasn't Eve. Eve never heard, heard anything as, as far as this goes. That was already given, and, and uh, Eve didn't hear it. He was, she was just taught by her husband, right? So here in verse 6, what do we got? We have a woman here that, that, is, that is fantasizing, right? When the woman saw that, that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and the tree was desired to make one wise, oh, look at all this fruit. All kinds of manner of fruit is just growing on this tree. This tree is is odd it's more it's different than any other tree it has it has bananas on this tree it has apples on this tree it has has grapes growing on what what is pears peaches my goodness man those look awesome and, and to make me wise so now i now understand even more and that i would even that i would even become like gods i would be in a god state she had imaginations and and her feelings went out of control fantasizing and imagination is idle time or downtime the word tells us it's the devil's playground She's imagining, she's fantasizing, and now she takes thereof, eats, and their eyes were surely open. Their eyes were surely open to good and evil. Now, if you know good, if you know good, you know they would know how to worship God, right? So they know everything that is good and pleasant. They know how to worship God because their eyes now have been opened. They've been given this information. And they also know evil, which means they also know what displeases God as well. So now they can make their own decision on which way I'm going to go. Am I going to, from now on, am I going to continue doing good or am I going to continue on doing evil? Because both looks pleasant to the eye. Pretty crazy, huh? Truly, once again, we we have to give them grace because once again, they are in a time period of innocence. They were as gullible as children, right? So I don't give too much too much to uh, the serpent here you didn't have to do too much didn't have to do too much here since they were in this innocent state so and they didn't have much of a law like the children of israel got from the time of moses right in second corinthians chapter 10 5 
it tells us about imaginations and what we should do with imaginations, right? It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 5, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought of disobedience of Christ. James 1, 5, James chapter 1, verse 5 speaks of wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him just ask. Who gives, God gives generously to whom, <laughs> to whom that is going, that, that's going to ask, right? Just go to God. We must put this we must learn and put this to practice. When we are enticed to do wrong, we need to put down, pull down every imagination and bring it into captivity. Amen. We need to just go right back to the Lord. When we feel, when we feel like, like, we are, like we are being enticed, we are being encouraged to do the wrong thing, we need to stop ourselves, folks. We've got the Holy Ghost. We need to stop ourselves. We need to let the power of God us to warn us and stop us from doing those things wrong amen we don't have that excuse of of being innocent we have been warned so here innocence ends in judgment before a new dispensation there's always there's always a judgment always a judgment so here you have the serpent, you have the tree, they ate of it, and the fall. Sin breaks communion with God. Now, they didn't die. They didn't die, but they sure did lose that communion uh, that communion and that, that walk with, with God. They were kicked out of the garden, amen? So innocence ends in judgment. They lived in a paradise. They were kicked out, and the Lord put an angel, angel to guard the other tree, the other tree of life. Had they eaten of the tree of life, which, which they weren't told not to eat of it, thank God they didn't eat of it, otherwise they'd live forever in sin. So here, here, we, see, here we see a visual of an angel. There's a sword. It says that the, that the, uh, the garden was guarded by that sword. And every, every, every turn they went to try to get, even try to get into that, the sword turned. And um, you don't want to play with that. So just forget about it. So you have the curse. Uh, uh, Adam was Adam was commanded to till the ground, and every time he would till the ground, he'd have to deal with weeds, thorns, thistles, and all that stuff, right? And the promise, the promise is, is of course, there's going to be a redeemer, right? There's going to re become a redeemer, and is going to redeem his people. Amen. We find that in, uh, Genesis chapter three, verse five, Romans five, nineteen. Amen. So we do have a promise. Amen. So now we have a second dispensation here. The judgment just happened. They're kicked out of the garden, garden and they have, to, they have to now work. <sighs> Thanks. Right? So here we got the second, uh, the second dispensation. It's conscience. Now they're to live off of their own brain and their own conscience, what, what, what feels right and what feels wrong. They need to, they need to do. Uh, once again, their eyes are open. They know, they know what good and evil is, and they can either decide to go, to go one way or the other. Amen? It's mentioned that Adam and Eve, after they were expelled from the garden, they have two sons. We know how that God had kicked them out of the garden to once again protect that tree of life. I, I'm just going ahead and uh, reiterating there. Of course, if they ate of that tree, they'd live forever. Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16 there's a brief, a very brief description of Cain and Abel, and they're growing up together. There comes a time that Cain and Abel wanted to give a sacrifice unto the Lord. Cain took on agriculture and was a tiller of the ground. So what was his offering to God going to be? 
It's got to be something of the ground, right? Because that's what he that's what he knows, right? Abel is a husbandman of cattle. He raised cattle. So what is he going to offer? He's going to offer he's going to offer a, a living sacrifice, right? We know how God accepts Abel's offering and not Cain's offering. That kind of made Cain a little, 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 little wrought, right? Gave him a, a few emotions that that he was not used to having before that, right? So one day while they were out in the field, Cain kills Abel with no remorse and has a bad attitude towards God, doesn't he? He has a bad attitude towards God and his own brother. He even said to God, what, am I my brother's keeper? God hears uh, uh, Adam, uh, or, um, uh, Abel has, uh, hears Abel uh, crying from the ground. His blood has come up before the Lord crying, where's your brother? <laughs> am I my brother's keeper? You're going to say that to God? Oh, my. Man, you've got. You you definitely you definitely have a bad attitude. You've got some you've got some thoughts going on, and you need to check yourself. Cain here evidently had authority problem. God warned him about his attitude. He was offended. Uh, he was offended with God because uh, he didn't accept his offering. He had a bad attitude. Am I my brother's keeper? He was uncooperative. God pleads with Cain, if you do what is right, wouldn't you be accepted? He had feeling he, he was disobedient here. God's warning of sin. Thank you. He was jealous at heart or, uh, over, his, over his brother, how his brother gave and he, uh, the Lord uh, took on his, on his offering. Listen, they knew, they knew what was what was right and wrong, right? Adam and Eve evidently taught them to give the offering so they knew what to do and how, how to take care of that offering properly and how to offer it to God properly, right? Uh, Adam and Eve evidently taught them that when we were kicked out of the garden, we were, we were in innocence before and we were naked and we tried to put clothing on our own selves and God said, no, nope, that's not good enough. I need to cover you. So here we got the first, we have the first time that God actually does a blood sacrifice, kills an animal, takes the skins and, and makes clothing for Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness, right? So obviously they taught, Adam and Eve taught them well on what to do. God, institu God instituted that something has to die in order for me to live. Right? God put that in order so that I can live. Thank you, Lord. He, he, had, he, was, he was coveting wrongful desires to envy of his brother. He was hostile. He was out of control. He was defiant, imaginations of anger that led to murder. These are all new feelings that, that he had. You, th you would think that one of these, you would think, hmm, maybe, maybe I should check myself. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's think about this for a minute. But no, he goes ahead, we, he goes ahead and, and, and we see here that he kills, that he kills Abel. Now, Adam and Eve, they go on and they have Seth. And this is going to, this, this part of the lesson, it goes through, it goes through the, the bloodline, the righteous bloodline. It shows the righteous bloodline. And it goes through the bloodline that leads to, uh, that leads through Noah, that leads to King David and, you know, King Jesus. Amen. So it is, the lesson is, is, is amazing. If anybody uh, would like to go through the whole thing, uh, just let me know. Uh, I would be more than glad to go over to the, the full lesson with you. So uh, we see here that we can either get with the program or continue in the offense that leads to a disastrous 
outcome. God isn't going to take away your bad attitude. You're going to have to deal with your own flesh. Ouch. God isn't going to take my bad attitude away. God is not going to take my anger away. He's not going to take my hostile away. Hey, you know, uh, some were such of you, right? We have all had bad attitudes. We've all been uncooperative. We've all been disobedient. We all have been jealous. So don't look at your neighbor and judge them. Get that beam out of your eye now. No, I'm just kidding. Let me lay hands on you. Get up here. <laughs> no, we're going to have to deal with our own flesh. We're going to have to deal with our own flesh. How do we deal with our own flesh? How do we deal with our own flesh? We deal with it through prayer, fasting, and prayer. Amen. We've got to turn to God. It's the only way. It's the only way. We've got to turn, we've got to turn that, that, that stony heart into, into good ground, and we have to come Come to the Lord. Amen. That's the way God just put it together. And it's the best plan. It's the greatest plan. Romans chapter 10, verses 17. So then, so then faith, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So the only way, the only way that we're going to change that mindset is by hearing the word. We're going to hear the word. We're going to hear the word. We're going to hear the word. And faith just comes by hearing the word. We're going to start believing in the word, and we're going to start just trusting and leaning on God as we continue on hearing the word of God through prayer, fasting, supplication. Listen, give yourself over to God. So continue with Cain's life here. A mark was placed on his forehead that no one could kill Cain. He was driven out of the land, out from the presence of the Lord, and travels eastward. Trouble starts right here. Trouble starts right here for Cain because he sins against God and is unrepented. He's unrepented. Uh, Genesis chapter 4, 17 it says, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Don't get confused for the Enoch that was taken, and here was, and then he was not, right? That Enoch comes from, from Noah's lineage, right? So he takes, he takes himself a wife. She conceives, bears a son, they, they call the, the son Enoch, and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Listen, people. People need help. And we, the people of God, need to help people. Amen? There are a lot of hurting people in this world, and the fields are ripe, and we are called to labor. This right here, what I'm going over right now, is the word of God for the people of God today. This is being preached in every congregation globally. I spend a lot of time listening to preaching, and I want to know what's going on. Uh, I want to know what's going on in, in, in our UPCI churches, what, what's being said today. I want to know what God is speaking to the churches today. And this same message that we're going through right now is the same message that every church is going through. We hear, uh, we even have Brother Morgan come through here and, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's all about prayer. It's all about seeking God and it's all about ministry. It's all about seeking and saving the lost. Amen. That's the heartbeat. That's the heartbeat of God here. Listen here, God is going to send hurting, and we must be ready to help. God is going to send the hurting, and saints, elders, first lady, pastor, me, we got to be ready, and we got to help. So here you have Cain, and he had evidently takes on one of the daughters of Adam and Eve, to go for an adventure. Do you know why Cain left the presence of God? Because he had no relationship with God. 
we leave God, we leave people because we have no relationship with them. When people give up on God, it's because there's no relationship. And when offense comes, the first thing that comes to mind is I'm gone, I'm out of here. When we have no relationship or commitment, you're going to start imagining, you're going to imagine fantasizing, you're going to fantasize about leaving. If Cain had a relationship with God, he would have had begged. Now, he did beg. He said, Lord, don't put this upon me. This is more than I can bear. He begged, but, but he was not repentant. That is key. He was unrepented. He had no relationship. And that's how, that's how he could have killed his brother. Because he really didn't have a relationship with his own brother. If you can kill your brother, you have no, and you can walk away from that and be like, who am I, my brother's keeper? You definitely, definitely, definitely have no relationship. You have no relationship. You have no relationship with God. You don't care what's going to come upon you. Genesis chapter 4, 18 through 23, it talks about these things you can go back to if you want to write these things down or you can go back through this lesson. You can write these verses down and go through it and read it. It's an incredible read. I encourage you to read it. Genesis chapter 4, 18 through 23 talks about Cain's lineage. Notice as you, as you go through it and you read it, some takes on more than one wife, the first polygamist. Some become knowledgeable in architecture, masonry. They learn agriculture, raising cattle. Some become artificers of instruments and harps and organs. Some become artificers of brass and iron. What is an artificer? An artificer means, means skilled or artistic, an inventor or a craftsman. We have, we have one of Cain's descendants who has multiple wives and brags about killing two men. Mind you, out, out, um, mind you, mind you, all of this out of disobedience of the Lord and from the presence and guidance of the Lord. Cain was kicked out from the presence of the Lord, goes east, takes his wife, has a child, and now starts a city. Of his, of his own, names it after his son, where is he getting all of this knowledge? It's definitely not coming from the Lord because he's out from the presence of the Lord, right? Mind you, out of this, all out of disobedience of the Lord and out of the, president, the, the, the presence and guidance of the Lord, this country was built on Luciferian intellect, practice, and worship. Imagine what kind of city that was. Romans chapter 1, 24 through 32, and I'm going to read. God gave them up to worldly lusts, unclean thoughts, homosexuality, worship the sons. No, I'm not reading this. That's right. I did not, I did not write this. Um, I did not write the scriptures down. I'm not reading this. I'm paraphrasing. I'm sorry. They worship the sun, the trees, the birds, and served the creatures as their gods. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancy, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Covet breakers, without natural affections, implacable unmerciful, and they which commit such things are worthy of death.
that's what was going on in his world. God is calling this world to repentance. Look at this. This is today, folks. He is giving this world up to worldly lust. Clean thoughts. Homosexuality is running rampant. God is calling the world to repentance, folks. And we are called to, to go to become witnesses of what God has done for us. Key here is we are called to become witnesses of God and go and tell of his goodness. Genesis 6, 5 through 8, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his hearts was only evil continually. God is seeing the wickedness of man and it is great in the earth today and that every imagination of their thoughts and of his heart was only evil continue. This is going on today. This is in today's world. This is about ready to get wrapped up here, folks. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 5 says, Cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Genesis chapter 6, verses 6 continues, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. Verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and every creeping thing, and fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. Verse 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Do we read here that Noah prayed? Do we read here that Noah sought God? Nope. It doesn't say anything about that. However, God looked at Noah's heart and he knew that he was going to make righteous decisions and that whatever he tells Noah to do, Noah's going to do it. He just knew Noah's heart and he knows your heart. He knows my heart. He knows that anything that, that he's, he tells us to do, that we're going to do it in our very best power to get it done. God is pleading with humanity. Where are, where are the laborers? Where are the laborers? The fields are ready. They're ripe and they're ready. He's pleading. He's pleading. He's pleading. Genesis 4, 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at your door. I'm almost done. Here are a few encouraging scriptures that might help some in some closing words. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, nine through ten. Chapter nine, or verse nine, it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. When we are weak, he is strong. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather, uh, I would rather glory in my infirmities, here's key, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my problem. I would rather glory in my shame. I would rather glory in my faults that I continue to fall down so that I have, I have the power of God dwelling on me. That, that the power of, of Christ may rest upon me. Do you want the power of Christ to rest upon you? He gloried. He gloried. He gloried in his infirmities. He gloried when men when men blamed him. He was he gloried when he was placed in prison. He gloried when he took the stripes. He gloried in in all of those afflictions that he had. He did that so that the power of Christ may rest upon him. What if he got offended? What if he got offended at God for for putting him in prison? Lord, I'm a prophet. I'm a minister of the gospel. And you're going to do this to me? I am I am at the deepest lowest pit of this jail cell. I am locked in chains and bonds. I mean, I'm all the way down to the bottom. Why am I in these chains and bonds too? No. He gloried in that infirmity. And when he did so, and when he worshiped, and when he praised, those stocks and those bonds opened up, the gates opened up, and he walked out of there, Sister Markham. He glorified in that infirmity. Glory in that infirmity so that the power of Christ dwell on you. Learn on that one. Let that chew on that one for a while. Chew on that juicy steak for a little while, right? Therefore, Continuing on in verse 10, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity in reproach and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. It's for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Is that encouraging or what? Is that encouraging? Instead of instead of being woe is me, is anything too hard for my God? When we are in infirmities, when we're in persecution, when we're in distress, when we're lonely. We need to praise God. We, learn, we need to learn how to praise God in those moments. We need to learn how to turn to God. We need to learn to turn to God so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Mm, I love that. When I saw that, I was like, whoa. That is cool. That's that's me right there. I could complain, and I have many a time. I've complained many a time, and 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 when when I complain, it's like I have to start all over, and then I go I go through the same trial, and then I get to that point where I'm completely I'm completely irritated to the highest level. Then again, I I complain again. So now I got to go all the way back to the beginning. Now I see this verse, and man, that is awesome. Things are happening. I am in distress. I can't make it on my own. I'm going to glory in God. I see this verse now. My eyes are open. My understanding is, 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 is wide open. I receive this, Lord, and I am going to, I'm going to defeat this. I am going to walk on this, amen. I'm going to walk on this water. I'm going to walk on this problem because, because I want the power of Christ to rest upon me, amen. We need to learn, lean on Christ. Psalms 119, verse 165. Great peace have those who love the law. Nothing can make them stumble when we love god's word nothing is going to make us stumble so what do we have to do we have to get into the word and we have to start reading it if we get into the word great peace great peace nothing can make them stumble 
It's all about relationship with God. If we have a relationship with God, then we will not stumble. Put the word of God into your heart that you might not sin against God. Words of King David. Put the word of God in your heart that you may not sin against God. Take the time to reflect on what triggers you and what your tendencies are when you feel defensive or offended. Take the time to reflect on what triggers you and your tendencies when you're feeling defensive or offensive. Understand yourself better by understanding yourself better can help you to recognize when you might be in danger of taking offense. Understand yourself. Recognize. Know, know the danger points that take on offense. Understand that because if you don't you're just going to start over again, right? You're going to start all over again. You're going to get offended. Offended is offense is huge. Offended is huge. When you're when you're offended, I said it once and I'm going to say it again. When you're offended, you can't forgive your brother or your sister. You can't forgive. You're so offended. Your 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 mind is your mind is going going all different types of ways. Pictures are coming into your mind of hatred. Listen, I can go back over it again and show you exactly what goes on in the mind. What went in the mind of Cain? I mean, murder went into. I mean, when you have hatred, when you have hatred, you're 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 as good as a murderer. That's what the Bible says. So know yourself. Know yourself. Know your trigger points. And when those trigger points, when some when something starts irritating you, when someone when someone is offending you, thank you. Walk off the stage. You're you're better off walking off the stage, cooling off. Let them say their piece. Let them let them wallow in their in in their offense. You walk off the stage and you get right into prayer. Have a relationship with God. If you don't have a relationship, if you don't have that tight, intimate relationship, you don't, you don't wake up in the morning and bam, prayer. It's prayer time. If you don't have that going on in your life, you have no relationship. You have no relationship with God. I'm almost done. We can all stand. Embrace true forgiveness. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgiving others is key to not taking on offense. You know when you're not offended, when, when someone offends you, just like, just like the woman that was called a dog, right? Right? Her whole person was offended, but she was not offended. And Jesus said, name it. Name it. What can I do for you? Name it. Show me the money. Offense. Let's learn about offense because offense is a killer. It, it will either kill you or you will, you will kill man. Amen? Embrace true forgiveness. God said forgive them for they know not what they do. They're being orchestrated. They're being orchestrated by, by darkness, evil, that want to just chew you up and spit you out. They do not know what they're actually doing. Had they known, they would have not have crucified Christ. He wouldn't have not have crucified him. Did Christ get offended? Did Christ get offended? If he would have got offended, there's no way that he would have been able to say, forgive them, Lord. Forgiving others is key to not taking offense. 
Holding on to holding on to res resentment and anger only harms you and can lead to a deeper feeling of offense. Forgiveness also begins to release pain you hold and carry. After you have forgiven, never bring it up again in thought or conversation, but if it does come up, if it does continue, continue to, to walk out the process of forgiveness. Offense. I was offended with my father for a very long time. A very long time. Still even today I have nightmares of him. I've forgiven him a long time ago, but when those things come into my mind and I know that they're, that they're not of God, they are definitely of the enemy, to, to, to come into my mind, to bring those feelings back up, to stir them back up again. I get bothered, I wake up, and now I'm bothered in my head. I have to start it all over again. I have to start it all over again. I have to start that process of walking in true forgiveness. I got to walk in that process of true forgiveness. I got to continue to to forgive and to forgive and to forgive. I have to, I have to forgive. I don't want to hold on to grudge. I don't want to hold it could because listen, if I can't forgive, my heavenly Father can't forgive. Work out that process. Work out that process of forgiveness. We must initiate and release. We have to initiate forgiveness, and then we have to release the forgiveness and just let it go. And just let it go. Had Cain repented here, he would have been left in the fold. He would have been left in the fold and he would have been taught a more perfect way. Amen. But he decided to do the very opposite. And what happens next is Noah, Noah builds that ark. The flood comes and all of man is, is destroyed. And the process happens all over again. The world, the world becomes evil and corrupt all over again. All over again. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord, O oh God. We thank you for your word, Lord, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your patience in us, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, Lord, O oh God. That is sufficient for me, O oh God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Touch your people, Lord, even tonight, Lord, oh God. Here that are suffering, Lord, oh God, of offense and the, and the things that carry them through their minds, oh God. Forgive them, Lord, oh God. I pray that they learn, Lord, oh God, and that they take this offense, Lord, oh God, and that they do away with it and throw it and cast it away, Lord, oh God. That they work out processes, Lord, oh God. Lord, to release it and just to let go, Lord, oh God. Free your people, Lord, oh God. From offense, Lord, oh God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you want to come to the front and you want to pray, you can do so. Let us continue in praying and supplication with the Lord. It is time to have a relationship with the Lord. This is this is how we take we we, we get rid of offenses in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. This is how we work out our own salvation. It starts with a relationship with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We must learn to work out process. We have to learn our own selves, what triggers, what triggers our offenses, what triggers our anger. Ah, we need to figure out what triggers our anger. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I don't want to be angry anymore, oh, God. Lord, I don't want offense, Lord, to take over my mind, oh, God. I don't want, Lord, oh, God, my, my youthful lust, Lord, oh, God.
God, to take control of my mind, Lord, oh God. I don't want what has happened in the past, Lord, oh God, to take over my mind, Lord, oh God. I don't want those dreams or those visions anymore, oh God. Father, forgive me, Lord, oh God, and lead me not into temptation, Lord, oh God. Oh, cleanse me, Lord, oh God, of all unrighteousness, Lord, for your name's sake, Lord, oh God. Clean me, wash me, Lord, oh God, that I might be white as snow, Lord, oh God. Oh, yea, Lord, give me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, Lord. Lord, 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 I want to be used, Lord. I want your power to rest upon me, Lord, oh God. I want to be a servant, Lord, oh God. Lord, and I can't have offense, Lord. Teach me, O oh God, your ways, Lord. Teach me, O oh God, your ways, Lord. Teach me, O oh God, your ways. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Those that are watching, let go of that offense. Let it go, just let it go. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is how we work out. This is how that we work that all out. Those processes. And the process is only found in Christ. Hallelujah. Begin a prayer, prayer life. Begin to pray. Begin and, and begin to, to open up your Bible and search the scriptures daily and see what they have to say. Begin a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for your many warnings. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for leading and guiding us to all truth, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, that we have that power to forgive, Lord, O oh God. We have the power to forgive, for they know not what they do, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Heal your people today, Lord, O oh God. Heal your people today, Lord, O oh God. Heal them today, Lord, Lord. Let them not forget this message, Lord, oh God. Let it go with them, Lord, the rest of the week, Lord, oh God. Help them to work out, Lord, oh God, their, their processes, Lord, oh God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, we give you all praise and all glory and all honor, Lord, oh God. You are great, and you are greatly to be praised, Lord. You're great. We thank you, Lord, again for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, oh God, for help, Lord. We thank you, Lord, oh God, for the church. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for brothers and sisters, Lord, O oh God, that we can go to and lean on. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for our elder that we can go and lean on. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for the ministers, Lord, of the gospel, Lord, that we can go to, Lord, for help, Lord, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. 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 If anyone needs any help, in, in any of this, you want a Bible study, you want to learn a little bit more about about this, uh, about this Bible study, uh, you can see me, myself. If you need counseling, if you need any help from the church, please don't be afraid. Let us know. We will do our very best to help you. We are loving. We are a family. We are a family of God. Right. And we want to help you. We want to help you today. Right, we want to help right, you today. Right. Yes, sir. In yes, Jesus' sir. name, in Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yay, yeah, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord, he knew who was going to be here today. He, he knew exactly who needed to hear this word. Those that are tuned in and are, they have listened to the word. It was the word of the Lord and it was for you. You needed this. I need this. I need this. I need this. This is what I'm going through. The Lord is showing me these things. These are the things that I need to overcome. I need to overcome my my things. I got to overcome my error. I got to overcome my my ways that, that that I do things. Some things I do wrong, and I need to overcome those things, or I continue to go back, and I'm considered as little faith. I don't want to be considered as little faith anymore. I want to be able to pass and go through those those trials and those storms, and and I want to go through them and 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 go through winning right it needing nothing going through our storms our trials and tribulations needing and wanting nothing ah yes lord yes lord yes lord i want to graduate i want to go on to greater things and movements of the lord i want to be used in greater ways how about you and the only way that we can do that is if we can we can get rid of get rid of these 
these things, these things that creep into our heart and our minds. Let's not get offended. Let's love one another. Let's forgive one another. Let's be, let's be quick to forgive. Let's love one another. Let's put aside our differences. Let, 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 us, let us put aside everything that, that, that causes division. That's exactly what the enemy wants, is to bring division into the church. And we can't have it this day. We can't have it anymore. We can't have it anymore. Let's love one another. Amen.